And we are back. Okay, so when last we left our heroes, we were saying that I wanted my stones to not get connected, but I also wanted them to be kind of smooth and so forth. Easiest way, that's why we have our show exploded. We don't want to see any of these guys still connected. What I had to do is actually change this particle size. Normally it's 0.01. I put it down to 0.0075. Uh, that kind of made it enough that it separated the stones and so they weren't all connected together but not so much that it was like onerously small or onerously insane or anything also i left these smoothing iterations and brought them up to two because i think that makes it a little bit um more realistic for these kind of stones anyways if you take a look at these guys let's actually turn off uh specular for a second and let's just look at these guys like this uh i just feel it makes them look more stony i guess so that's why we left all that stuff in there, so we can do things like that and still get something that looks uh, relatively cool. So here's our initial textured wall with the black stones. Here's our final stone and mortar bits uh, broken up. The only thing I'm going to change, I'm going to make one more change, and that is in our original guy. Um, and remember, this guy over here, he's just an instance of our image breaker, right? So changes we make to this, once we say save image type, like if you jump, if you, uh, is it off screen? No, it's not. Um, basically, once we make a change here, we'll say save operator type, and then it'll automatically just magically happen over there. So what is it that I wanted to do? I wanted to show you something. This is kind of a bug in Houdini, so it needs to, um, you know, basically our next steps are going to do the simulation, right? Now for simulation, we could do, uh, an RVD fracture by group and blah, blah, blah. It's easier to just do it by name because that's kind of the way Houdini expects things to be done. If you remember and recall, over here in Voronoi fracture, it creates a name attribute. So that way when we did this, it gives a nifty little name attribute. Oh, sorry, there. Nifty name attribute for everybody based on their little, little point guy. And I said uh, back, if you remember way back when, I said for the stones, we had to do that explicitly with this guy. Now, we did that, and that should actually work. But if you right-click on this, inexplicably, it's blank. And the reason is uh, you have to get rid of this thing. And even though the group mask doesn't really look it should be any different, now if you look at it, boom, now it has stone one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. So it has the appropriate name attribute. That's the only real change that I think we still need to make. Other than that, I think we're pretty much ready, and this thing seems pretty robust. When we come out of here, I'm going to right-click and say, uh, save operator type. It's kind of off your screen. Let me do it here. Save operator type. God, it's still off the screen. OK, you're going to have to trust me. Below match current definition, there's save operator type. And the reason I'm doing that is so that that way that propagates to the other guy, to the stone, uh, the stone wall one. Okay, so I promised this was the last class. We're going to start breaking stuff. Time to start destroying things. Here's our simulation. Now, if you recall, our simulation, we just had a wall and a ball. Ball, wall. We said wall, meat, ball, and we did... Oh, actually, I made a camera for this, didn't I? Doink. And we did this. And now if we hit it, hey, it does the same crap it did before. Why? Because it's saying the entire wall is just an RVD object. This guy. We're going to replace that with an RVD fractured object. We could also do a packed object and some other things we could do, but uh, for now to keep it simple, we're going to do this. Op input path is going to, or the, you know, SOP path is going to be the same. And so I'm going to take this guy out and I'm going to put this guy in. And then it's going to, if you're playing along at home, it's going to sit there and click through some stuff. We're using fracture by name, so each guy should get its own name. So let's find out what actually happens here. And I'm going to, for drama's sake, do this. Everybody remember the old Kool-Aid commercials from when you were a kid? Kidding, you guys are way too young. Anyways, it was a Kool-Aid guy that ran through a brick wall and somebody said Kool-Aid or something. And he would go, oh yeah! And he would burst through a brick wall like that and send bricks going through. And they did it without the advantage of Houdini. I don't know how they did that magic. Okay, so nifty, cool. We've got bits broken up. Everybody's got a texture. Uh, we've got rocks and stuff, fun stuff. So let's take a look at this from the side. Okay, so the thing I want to point out, because this is pretty cool, we basically went from, 
just a freaking cube and an image, a single image, a picture, an actual brick wall to actually making a wall we can break apart. That's pretty dang cool. And we did it in such a way that we can uh, re, I'm gonna delete that. We can reuse it with a different image all we want and just do this all day. That's pretty fantastic, amazing. I really should have patented this and sold this. Unfortunately, I'm a terrible businessman, so you guys all just kind of get it for free. Let's grab it with the stone bits, completely different picture, completely different image, blah, blah, blah. Let it do its thing. Let's see if we can just pipe that directly into the simulation and see what happens then. This should be fun. All I'm gonna do is that. I'm gonna make absolutely no other changes whatsoever. Just gonna do that, and if our magic is working well, this guy should break through and be a stone wall instead of a brick wall. And here's where I hold my breath, because hopefully things don't crash or it doesn't work, and I have to re-record this too hard because I made a mistake, which would be horrible. But no, we're all total geniuses. Cool, check it out. It's gonna break through and do this whole thing. I'm gonna pause uh, right now and actually bake this out on both these so you can see them at full speed. So uh, give me just a second. I'm gonna hit the pause button. I will be right back. Okay, that's basically it. Baked out a couple things. I'll put some others on the, uh, you know, some other images and funky stuff, maybe throwing a superhero through there just to make things cool and give you guys some other projects files to do. But you get the idea. And uh, again, if I may say so, it's really cool. You basically just need an image, nothing else. You make cut points from it, and you can use it for destruction however you want. There's still, I mean, there's always a lot of things I lost over in how you would actually manage the destruction. Like maybe you'd have more glue parameters to keep these guys together longer. Uh, you might switch from bullet to ODE if it crashes or has some other problem with that. And how you texturize the inside is, you know, up to you on different ways. The way I did have it is one, one way to do it, but not necessarily the only way to do it. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave one, uh, the final version in here with the broken brick wall and the stony wall and everything else. Again, thank you guys so much. And thank you for digital tutors for giving me a chance to show this stuff to you. I think this stuff is a blast, uh, cooking up something cool for the next tutorial. So come back in next time and, uh, thanks for watching and, uh, have a nice day.